Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and if you're new here, thanks for watching. Please remember to hit subscribe for more great videos so you can keep up to date with all that I'm doing. Today is an exciting video because this is probably the last time I'm going to be talking to you from my little old Transit Connect because my new van has arrived. So I've got a brand new Ford Transit Custom in azure blue and I saw it today for the first time and it's absolutely gorgeous and it's as we speak it's being sign written um, with an amazing uh, layout I'm really pleased with the results so far I went over to see it being done and it is looking awesome there were a few little hiccups because the Sortimo racking that I've ordered has been delayed in Germany. So it's arriving at some point this week, but it was supposed to be being fitted today. Um, so probably I'm not gonna get the completed van until the middle of next week, which is a little bit annoying. But uh, yeah, one of those things, it happens. Uh, but overall, I'm really looking forward to getting the new van. I'm looking forward to having some more space because the Connect has been great, but it's just getting a bit too cramped now for all the stuff that I need on a day-to-day -day basis. And so uh, the back of the van, I'll show you a picture, it's just ended up getting piled with stuff. So I'm really looking forward to having a properly racked out van. Um, I'm gonna have deadlocks on it. I'm gonna have a new roof rack put on. I'm gonna have a double 230 volt socket outlet in the back so that I can plug in my battery chargers, I can run a compressor in there if I need to from time to time to use uh, various tools with that. So yeah, it's gonna be really exciting. I can't wait to show it to you. The van tour is coming soon. Please be patient. Gonna to have to wait probably another two weeks for it to be ready but it's gonna be well worth it. So as always guys, subscribe to the channel, smash that like button if you haven't done so already, and hit that bell notification button so that you'll get notified when the next video comes out. So in the meantime, I wanted to talk to you about some of the things that I've been doing today. Uh, you might notice though, first of all, that I'm a little bit red. Uh, it's quite sunny here today in Cambridge actually and yesterday was the same but I've been on holiday for the last two weeks as well I've been in Italy uh, enjoying some sunshine so I got a little bit of sun so that's why I'm looking a little bit red um, but this week because I've been on a holiday it's a bit of a manic week this week because I'm catching up basically uh, from the last two weeks having not worked so I've got to cram in a lot of jobs this week it's gonna be pretty mad. So today, for example, I'm just sitting in the van now because I've arrived a little bit early to a job that is an EICR that I've got to do, but it's 4.30 in the afternoon, right? And I'm just about to start an EICR, so you can see where I am on my time scale. At the moment, I'm just cramming in jobs left, right, and center to try and keep on top of everything because of having not worked for the last two weeks. Hey, one of the joys of being self-employed, I guess. Uh, you don't get paid when you're on holiday, so when you get back, you've got to catch up. But uh, actually, it's been a good day today. I've got a lot done so far. So I just wanted to run through with you some of the jobs that I've done today and show you a few pictures so you can see what I've been up to. So the first job of the day was... So first thing I did today was actually went to the wholesaler just to pick up a load of materials, and I used BEW. Uh, electrical wholesalers most of the time they're really reliable the guys in there are really friendly and um, they've been good to me so far so I try and give most of my business to them if I can um, so I went into BW to collect all the things that I'd ordered for the jobs for the week and they had a calibration day going on so they offered to calibrate my fluke multifunction tester while I was waiting only took 10-15 minutes Gave me a cup of coffee while I waited, so that was quite nice. Um, but uh, yeah, interesting question really about calibration because my NIC EIC inspector said to me when he came round that you don't actually have to have your testers calibrated every year. Um, 
And interestingly, when they do the calibration, they don't actually change anything, they don't change any settings. All they're doing is checking, basically, to make sure that your meter is functioning to within the limits that it's supposed to function at. So some people think that they're when they're calibrating it, they're actually changing the settings, they're sort of bringing it back to the levels that it should be. They're not doing that at all. All they're doing is running some checks to see if it's testing accurately and then printing out a report, which you can do yourself basically with one of those little Cal card things that the NIC, EIC sell. It's basically a little like credit card size thing with uh, different resistance points on it. And you can just check the tester at different resistances to make sure that your test readings are correct. I know that the full on calibration that they do in these kind of places like the wholesalers is a lot more thorough than that. But um, actually as installers and testers and inspectors we should be checking our own equipment regularly. So I do a monthly check and I keep a log of that so that using my cal card so that I know that my tester is accurate. Um, but uh, this year I was like, shall I get it calibrated? Do I really need to? I had it done last year. I know that it's testing accurately anyway. But I thought, you know what, it's like 30 quid. It's worth to just get it done. And then, uh, you know, I've got a certificate. I know that I've kind of kept on top of things. So I choose chose to get it done this time. Let me know in the comments what you guys do. If you have yours done every year, every two years, how do you go about it? Do you send it off to get it done? Because that could be a challenge sometimes. Uh, like today, for example, I said to them, look, I can't come into the calibration day. I've got too much work on. I need my tester. Luckily, they could just do it for 10 minutes before I started work. So that worked out great. But if you're going to send your tester off, then that's really difficult because you are basically got no test equipment for uh, however long it takes to send it off and get it back. Unless you've got two multifunction testers that you use, which is a nice luxury to have. But let's face it, they're expensive bits of kit, so I wouldn't have two MFTs lying around in the back of my van for sure. Anyway, yeah, let me know in the comments what you do. So after I went to the wholesaler, I went to my first job. I would start my first job at 8 a.m. wherever possible, so that I'm not uh, getting stuck in any traffic. So my first job was a little job just replacing a few things. There was a dimmer switch in the living room which was faulty. And it was one of those weird ones, it was like a touch sensor pad thing on it rather than a knob that you turn to dim. So you sort of brush your finger against it or hold your finger on it and it will dim and then you hold your finger on it again and it will go brighter. They're never very reliable in my experience, those things. And this one was old, it was like 20 years old or something, so it just wasn't working properly. So I changed that over to a proper dimmer switch, an LED dimmer switch, because they were using LED bulbs in the light fitting that it was controlling. And then another thing I did was converted a single socket in the hallway to a double socket. Now, I wanna know what you think about this because I don't really like using these, but sometimes it's sort of the, the sensible option. Uh, what I'm talking about is these single to double converter sockets. Do you know what I'm talking about? So it's basically a double socket that can fit over a single back box. And you have, instead of having the two fixing screws on the outside of the double socket, you have the screw sort of near the middle because they fit into the single back box. They're the spacing of the single back box. Now, what I don't like about these sockets is that they are quite deep usually. They stick out by about an inch. Um, you can get some, I know Schneider makes some that are a little bit more slimline, shall we say, and they look quite nice. I did use those once on a job where I had to fit like 10 of them, but in this case I just used the one that the wholesalers had on the shelf. Didn't look the nicest, but it's so simple and easy and quick to do, rather than chasing out the wall to get a double back box in and then the customer having to do some making good, decorating, all that. This wall was wallpapered and yeah, it was just, uh, they didn't want to be paying, you know, uh, however much it would have cost for me to work for a couple of hours to s chase out the wall, sink a double back box in and all that. So they were happy to just use this converter socket and I did it, it works fine, it looks, you know, okay. A little bit naff to be honest, but, these people didn't really mind at all about that. They just wanted the function of it. They didn't really care about how it looked. 
So yeah, I did that. And then upstairs in the bathroom, there was a weird sort of pendant light that they had in the middle of the bathroom. And the, you, you probably see this a lot, but the covers, you know, the screw on cover for the ceiling rows, uh, it had broken, it just wouldn't fit up properly. So you had live conductors exposed there. It had this really hor horrible old sort of lamp shade on it, which had, it was covered in dust and then all the paint was chipping off. It was really hideous. So I recommended just to change it to a LED sort of um, circular um, bulkhead type fitting, IP rated. So I use what are called, what are known as BT14s. They're made by Knight, Knight's Bridge. Uh, they're really nice LED circular bulkhead, IP44. And they're really easy to fit. They look good, they're reasonably cheap, so they tick all the boxes really. So I fitted one of those for the customer. Uh, I did quote them for an EICR as well because the consumer unit looked a little bit old and the wiring looked a little bit old. Some of the light switches I could tell were sort of from the 70s, um, but they didn't want to go ahead with the EICR at this time, so you know that's up to them. That was the first job of the day. So that took me like an hour to do that and then I went from there to quote for some Nest products. I am a Nest Pro installer so I'm registered on the Nest website as a Nest Pro installer and that means that customers contact me through the Nest website to ask for quotes for installation of Nest products. So this one was for quite a few products actually. It was a customer who's just bought this house. It's a brand new house but they wanted to get it smartened up shall we say with a bit of modern technology so they wanted a nest thermostat they wanted a nest hello uh, video doorbell they wanted two or three nest iq outdoor cctv cameras so that they can secure the property and see what's going on when they're not at home so yeah i had a little look around that did a quote for that that was um, my next job then I went to another job in Cambridge, which I quoted for about two months ago. Um, basically, this gentleman and his father are renovating their bathroom and they wanted to put some recessed lights in. They wanted to change the fan in the bathroom to a humidity timer fan and just get rid of some horrible trunking that was on the ceiling and things like that. So what I did was ripped out the old light that was in the center of the bathroom, ripped out the trunking that went from the light across the ceiling to the fan that was there at the moment, which wasn't working properly, got rid of the isolator switch for the fan because it didn't need it as it was a bathroom with a window in. Um, I moved the pull switch to the light so that it wasn't hanging over the cabinet of the, the mirror cabinet. So the cord went actually directly down in the right place rather than sort of across and down. Uh, and then I cut in two holes for some recessed LED down lights, JCC 1001s put a couple of those in it was a bit tricky though because in the ceiling there was a lot of metal and it turns out basically that it's one of those weird sort of kit houses that was built with like metal joists so when I drilled the holes I just caught a couple of these metal joists and I had to widen the holes out a little bit fortunately I was able to make quite a mess in the ceiling because the customer's going to put some kind of wooden paneling on the ceiling uh, wouldn't have been my first choice, but they wanted to do that, I guess, to neaten it up. So I actually fitted the down lights and then I just unclicked the light fittings so that they can put the wooden panelling over, cut a couple of holes and then click the light fittings back up afterwards. Um, so, yeah, that was, that was that job. I changed the circuit breaker to an RCBO because the consumer unit didn't have RCD protection for the lighting circuit. And there was also another fan upstairs in the upstairs bathroom which wanted changing to a humidity timer fan as well. Basically, um, I'll put a link in the description for these, but the, I use the Silent 100T uh, 100s by Envirovent, which I've talked about before in a previous video. Uh, but this one is what they call Silent 100HT, which is humidity timer. And essentially what happens is, like a normal fan, it's got a timer, you turn the light on, when you turn the lights off, it runs on for however long you set it for. 
but it will also trigger if the humidity level in the bathroom is high uh, and then it will stay on for your timed period as well so that means that if you know for whatever reason your humidity levels go up in the bathroom it's just going to give you that bit of ventilation that you need to get rid of any excess moisture so it's sort of like a belt and braces thing really and um, these customers wanted it because they had a few problems with damp in the past in the bathrooms so yeah installed a couple of those the rcbo that i installed was a crabtree starbreaker and it was the first time i have installed a mini Crabtree Starbreaker RCBO. So I'll show you that in the, in the in a minute the pictures. But it was yeah it was nice easy to install. The Crabtree Starbreakers are the ones with a little um, kind of pin on the back that clicks into the bus bar. So the bus bar is actually covered and it's got little slots in it and the pins just click in. So it's quite a safe feature that they have there. It means that there's no exposed live parts really for you to touch when you open the consumer unit in terms of the bus bar anyway. So yeah, that was the next job. That took me up until about 1.30, no, maybe one o'clock. And then, I got a call from the van company saying that my van had been delivered to the workshop where it's going to have all the work done. The finance had come through for it because it's a lease van and so it was currently being sign written. And I was working just about 10 minutes away from the workshop of CBS who is doing all the work on my van and also Cambridge Sign Company who are doing the signage on the van. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna sneak over there. I've got a spare 20 minutes, so I'm gonna sneak over there and have a look. And this is what I saw when I arrived. Tell you've done this before. I know a couple of times. A man of skill. <laughs> a couple of times. Big reveal. It's great, I like it because it's so big as well, it's just like really, yeah, yeah, really yeah. stands out. I think the coloured vans as well, white looks really good. Yeah. It just, you know. Yeah, so I was super happy to see the van, it looks amazing, it's just, you know, it's brand new. Um, it's super smart and I love the colour, the azure blue colour is amazing, it's better than I expected to be honest. It's it's not sort of like a real glaring blue, it's quite a subtle um, sort of a grey blue 
and with the white writing on it, I just think it looks really awesome. I can't wait to see it completely finished because it was only half done when I arrived there and I just can't wait to see it all racked out and ready to go. Can't wait to bring my stuff across into it. So once I had seen Van, I went over to my next job, which was a quote for an electric vehicle charging point. And this was a lady who has recently bought a second hand um, uh, Nissan Leaf about three four year old Nissan Leaf and she wanted an electric vehicle charging point installing for that so I had a look around that and it's an interesting little job quite an easy straightforward one actually which is nice because the consumer unit is in the basement uh, or cellar um, and the cellar is right next to the driveway where the charging point needs to be so it's probably about a five meter cable run they got a brand new Hager consumer unit, which was installed only a year ago. So we know that probably the wiring is, you know, good and up to scratch at least. All bonding is in place, etc. The only thing is it's a TNS system, so I'm going to need to put an earth stake in for the charging point only, uh, and then you know that will solve that earthing issue that is part of the regs. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to put a Rolex charging point in there and she wants me to supply a five meter cable as well to plug into um, the car she doesn't want it tethered which is when the cable is attached to the charging point she wants the cable separate so that she can plug it into other charging points when she's on road trips and stuff like that so yeah I'm gonna give her a quote for that and we are OLEV registered so we can get the government grant for her and save her 500 pounds off her charging point as well which is uh, nice for the customer Meanwhile, earlier on in the day, I'd had a phone call from someone whose power had all gone off. So they got a bit uh, freaked out because last night the power all tripped and everything apart from their lights, they said, was not working. Uh, so it was the main trip switch, they said, which had, had tripped. And so I said to them, look, I've got quite a busy day, but I probably can squeeze it in this afternoon at some point, about 2.30, 2.45 maybe. Um, so they said, okay, we'll, we'll go home from work and we'll you know, meet you there. Just give us a call when you're on your way. So I went there, 2.45 I got there and I arrived and the there was a dual RCD consumer unit, which was you know, maybe 15 years old, something like that and one of the RCDs had tripped, so there was about seven circuits that were off because of that. And here's how I do this, you know, this is the first port of call always, because they said, oh, you know, we've got no power. So what you do is this, you turn all the MCBs off that are on the RCD section. Turn all the MCBs off, circuit breakers off. Then you turn the RCD on. Hopefully, it goes on okay which in this case it did. Then you turn the circuit breakers on individually, one by one. So in this case, I turned the first one on, boom, straight away it tripped. First circuit was labeled immersion heater. So I thought, hmm, okay. That sounds like a, a, you know, a suspect because immersion heaters, you know, and earth faults are, you know, quite common. So, okay, I turned the immersion heater circuit off again, reset the RCD, then one by one, turned all the other circuit breakers on and they all went on fine all the power was restored in the rest of the house apart from that one immersion heater circuit so that was like brilliant straight away you know two minutes in i'd already got most of the power on for them and then i checked out the immersion heater did an insulation resistance test on the element and the element was gone there was 0.01 mega ohms between uh neutral and earth and live and earth on it so clearly the immersion heater element has corroded and needs replacing. Now there was two in this tank. There was a high one and a low one. The high one, like halfway up the tank, is for a boost. So usually it's just for, you know, if halfway through the day you wanna have a shower and you've run out of hot water, you click that on for half an hour, it gives you half a tank of hot water, and then you can have your shower without having to heat up the whole tank or wait for the economy seven to heat up the whole tank overnight it was that one that was faulty the bottom one was apparently still okay although it was on the off peak so it was hard to know for sure if it's completely functioning but I, I ran some tests on it and it seemed okay 
So at least they could have hot water overnight tonight. Uh, the Economy 7 will heat the water up still. And I just isolated that faulty immersion heater for the moment. I said to them, um, you know, I can give you a quote for replacing it, but you will need to drain the tank. And, you know, it, it's quite a big job. So um, just so you know, and they said, oh, well, the landlord needs to sort it out. So we'll let the landlord know and see, see what they want to do. So it was good. It was a good little call out sort of job that it was only, you know, it took me 20 minutes, half an hour to do the whole thing. Fault finding is always difficult because you think, you know, uh, shall I squeeze it in? But then what happens if it turns out to be a real nightmare one and you're just searching for hours and you can't find the problem, you know? In this case, it was great, it was super quick. But the way I protect myself in those situations is I say to the customer, look, I've got an hour maximum. This is how much it's gonna cost. I will do my inspection um, and, you know, this is how much it will be for up to an hour of investigation. And then after that, we can discuss how to proceed. If there's work needed, I can quote you for it. Or if I if if I say, well, probably, you know, I've still not found the fault, but in another hour I might find it. Do you want to go ahead and pay for another hour? Then, you know, you you know where you are, the customer knows where they are as well. In this case, you know, I, I got paid for an hour's work, but it only took me half an hour, although, you know, time to get there and get back and whatever. You, you know, you need to, you, you need to, you can't be charging for half an hour increments, that would, um, that would be sort of pointless well let me know in the comments if you do but i would never do that i just think you know one hour is the minimum charge that i would take for any job so um, did that little job that was good then i went to another quote for a nest thermostat and in this case it was a little bit of an unusual one so i wanted to visit the site to have a look usually i will just quote them based on you know the information that they have if it's a single nest thermostat needed for a simple system but in this case they had a separate hot water tank which they wanted a nest for that was not connected to the central heating system then they had the central heating system and then they had an underfloor heating system as well so I needed to have a little look and, and design a special system quote for them so did that that was quick got that done and now I am here where I am it's 4 30 almost and I'm just about to start the quote for no sorry the EICR it's just a one bedroom flat so it shouldn't take me too long hopefully but it's a landlord that I've worked for in the past and the tenant has had a few little issues so he said can you just do an EICR please and um, just check out to make sure everything's okay so hopefully this is not going to take that long Otherwise, I'm going to be really tired because it's been a long day and I've got a few more big days this week. So, uh, yeah, that's life. It's always good to be busy. Good to have a lot of work. So I'm not complaining. Anyway, I hope you like this video, guys. As I say, hold on tight for the van tour. It's coming very soon, within the next two weeks, hopefully. And in the meantime, if you haven't already, Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more videos that are coming up soon. And please hit that like button and hit the notification bell as well so that you'll get notified every time a new video comes out. Take care and all the best.